Yo, what's going on guys? JC here and welcome back to episode 5, I believe this is, about building your daisy map from scratch. Uh, today what we're going to be going over is your nav mesh generation and exporting the map group POS for all of your buildings as well as your map group cluster. Now it may seem daunting, it may seem like it's a lot, but I promise uh, this is going to be actually pretty quick. Um, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. We'll go over all of the files that you need, all of the folders you need to create, and we're going to make this super, super easy. So we're just going to go based off of the map that I've been uh, working and building, which is Arcadia. So in your, you're going to want to create a at mod folder inside of your steam workshop. Now, if you are building your map through editor, um, or if you've been testing your map locally, you should already have a at mod folder inside of your workshop. And then of course, once you go in, it's just literally an add-ons folder. These would be the add-ons that I have on my map locally um, while I'm testing. So you should have this. If you don't, uh, you need to create an at mod folder inside of your daisy community, or I'm sorry, inside of your daisy uh, directory. And you're just gonna at map name. And then inside that, all you need is an add-ons folder. And then this is where we're going to be putting our world PBO, our data PBO, um, our nav mesh PBO will end up going in here. You know, anything that has to do with your map. If you have any custom buildings that are going in here, if you have any custom assets that you've made yourself, you would put them in here. And then this is how you would load it on a local uh, mod to test your map in editor. If you guys wanted me to do a tutorial on how to actually get your uh, map into editor and then export the buildings into terrain builder just let me know below and i'll definitely cover that i'm probably going to make one anyways but uh yeah we'll get to that so once you've created an at folder and which you should already you should already have but if you don't that's okay uh, we're going to create one now um the next thing all you need to do is just create an mp missions folder just just the way that i've done so just mp missions and then inside here, you're going to create an empty dot your map name. All right, so it just needs to be empty dot your map name. And then inside this folder, uh, we're going to have an init.c file, which all of this, all this does is it tells us to run an export. Don't worry, I will have all of this um, pasted below. So you guys can just, it's very simple, just copy paste. Uh, I might even have a something set up where you can just download the files yourselves, but You'll see it's just a simple init folder or init file that just tells us to export. We have our map size, the center of our map, the map size, and then this I'm assuming is doubled. I don't know. To be honest with you, I have a 10 by 10 map. These are 20 by 2480s. So this would be like the biggest. This is like Pripyat size. I just keep it like this and I haven't had any issues. So this is also going to give us our map uh, group cluster which will give us like the fruit trees, the stones, the all of that jazz. And then you're also going to need to have a map group proto in here. So the map group proto that you're going to want to use is probably the one from Sakal. If you're going to be using Sakal assets, if you do not have any Sakal assets, then the regular Chinaris one will be fine. I will say, and this is a full disclosure, if there is a building that is inside or that is not inside of this map group proto, say you have a custom building that even though you've added loot points to that custom building, if it is not inside this map group proto, it will not generate a map group POS for it. So it needs to be inside of here, whether it's uh, like I said, anything. If you've went in and you've edited loot spots, you need to make sure you have your updated um, building type inside of this file. Otherwise it will not generate a, um, what's it called? It won't generate a map group proto for you. No, I'm sorry, map group POS. So once that's done, uh, you won't have a storage file just yet, but I'm going to go ahead and delete the storage file and I'm going to just run a batch file. Now the batch file, I have two of them. I have an exports batch file and then I have a nav bat, which I call my nav mesh generator. So let's go over the exports first. It's a very simple batch file. So it's just start daisy diag 64, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have a mod. So mod equals Arcadia. This is why you want to have, you need to have an updated, um, an updated data in a world PBO. All right. You need to have these updated because it needs to know what buildings are, you know, where your most recent buildings are. And then we have our mission. 
So this is where it's basically going to be sending our export data to. So we have our mission is mine is set to my D drive steam, basically my root directory folder, MP missions, empty dot Arcadia. So this is telling them, this is telling this thing right here to load this mod. And now when it loads this mod and runs, it's going to run our init file, which only tells it to export. So it's going to only tell it to export into right here, if that makes any sense. So this is the mod that we're running. This is the files, like the server files, the mission files that it's going to run. And being that we have it set to like a, like I said, an import only, or I'm sorry, an export only, it's just going to export. So once you're done in this, you literally just double click and run your batch file. So when you run your batch file, it's going to basically just load up a local daisy server type game. You know what I mean, it's, it's nothing simple. You don't have to join it through the launch or anything. You just literally run it and you'll know you've done it right. When it loads, you might hear some like cars wrecking or whatever, but it's going to sit there and it's going to say idle mode countdown. Uh, as soon as it says idle mode countdown, you don't have to sit here and, and wait 20 minutes. You don't have to, as soon as you see this idle mode countdown, it has generated every building every, I mean, it's very, very quick. This, I mean, this takes all of like five minutes, if, if that, you know what I mean? It's just not even two minutes. As soon as this loads, you're going to hear some like, like I said, it's going to sound like cars crashing or something. That's what I've always uh, heard it as. And then it'll just say idle mode countdown. I'm just going to let this run. Like I said, right now it's generating all of the files. It's doing everything. There it goes. It just did it idle mode active and now it's literally going to stay on this screen forever like this is it you can hit escape you, it, but this is it so now now that we've seen this message we can just go ahead and exit the game which will just close the server down basically now if we go back to our mp missions and we open up our empty arcade you'll notice that we now have another storage folder in here we're going to go to our export folder and Ta -da. This is a map group POS for all of the buildings that are currently on my map. Then if we come here, we have a map group cluster as well. Yay. Look at that. All of our stones and every, everything's working good. Woohoo. And that's, that's, that's as easy as it is to like generate exports. Now, if you're building your map through editor, you, you very well could just sit there and export um, a map group POS every single time you're done building an area. But honestly, I feel doing that can get a little, it can get confusing. You might not know what you have or blah, blah, blah. So honestly, once you're all said and done, you should just generate it this way anyways, because if you decide to move any of those buildings, so, so get this, say you build a nice area and you build it an editor and you export, you know, the map group POS, and then you, you bring it into train builder and you decide, you know what? I really don't like this building. Let me go ahead and just move it two feet over here. Well, now all of your loot spots are going to be off and you're going to have to generate a new map group POS anyway. So you might as well just do it this way. This, this is easy to me. Now let's go over nav mesh generation. So nav mesh generation is the same thing. Um, you're going to basically, it's going to be inside of your root daisy directory folder, but you are going to have another batch file and it's going to be called your nav bat is what I've called it. So if we edit this folder, or I'm sorry, edit this file. It's again, it's just a little batch that starts up Daisy. Um, start Daisy Diag. The mod again is Arcadia. And this time, all we're doing is start Nav Mesh Data Center with port 2302. Guys, just a quick little input. My bad. As I'm editing this video, I realized I forgot a very important step. So inside of our Nav Bat right here, uh, when if we edit it with our notepad, you'll see that it's running a config server DN. I'm sorry, dznv.config. Uh, you actually need to have this config. It's right here. It basically tells us that we're doing a nav generation and we need to, down here where it says class mission, you need to create yours. So you need to put your empty.arcadia folder right here. Just a quick little thing that I forgot. I apologize. Uh, thankfully, I caught it in the editing process. This file will be included. All right, back to the video. That's all you need. You just need this batch. So this is going to run a local 
sided of the game so the way the nav mesh generation works is this is create as soon as i fire this up and i run this batch it's going to start running the daisy server thing and basically what it's going to be doing is going to be using my mod so my at arcadia mod it's going to be using this mod right here to basically load a offline version of the game that you can't even join it's just basically you're starting a server all right that's all it's doing is it's starting a server running your mod so when the first time you do this you will not have a nav mesh dot pbo like you won't have this you're only going to have your data and you're going to have your world and then whatever you know mods custom buildings or anything that you've got in there but these are the only two main ones you're probably going to have and that's okay so we actually hold on let me let me uh mount my p drive real quick because you're gonna need your p drive mounted again if you guys don't know how to mount your p drive at this point you really should but it's tools extract game data let it go through its whole thing and then you just mount your p drive it's there's really nothing hard on that all right sorry so once you get through this and you're ready to launch your nav mesh this is where it gets just a little bit tricky all right so once you the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to just have your mod folder in here the same way you're going to create a new batch file i will have this command line i'll have this posted below uh, the only thing you'll need to change is your at mod name and then we're just going to run this batch file so once we run this batch file you'll see up here in this top corner it's now creating a dedicated host which is just running locally that's all it is and then you're going to open up your daisy tools while this is doing this and you're going to see a bunch of stuff saying it's deleting a bunch of stuff. It, it's completely fine. So you're going to come over to your nav mesh generator. Let's just hit the little folder. And we're going to just double click this nav mesh generator dot 64 or under 64, whatever. So let's let this thing now right here where it says generation, you're just going to hit connect data server. So the address that it gives you is just your local address. Don't change this. Just hit OK. And you'll see right now it says receiving world parms. So this has to be running while this is trying to connect. So let this, it's going to remove all these CE points. That's perfectly fine. Just let it do its thing. And then eventually it's going to say down here that uh, world parms have been received. Bam, right there. World parms received. Now all you're going to need to do is go to generation and hit start generating. I'm not going to do it because it takes me probably 15, 20 minutes to I'm about, about 10, 15 minutes to do a gen, uh, generation. And I just did one yesterday, but it's completely fine. What you do is you just hit start generating. Once you generate a nav mesh, uh, it'll say that it's been, it'll be done. You go to file and then you just hit save nav mesh. So if we just hit save nav mesh, what I like to do is I like to go to my P drive. Uh, I'm going to go to my Arcadia. I'm going to open up my nav mesh folder and then I would just override my nav mesh, but you're going to just create a new one that says nav mesh.nm and you just put it inside of your um, nav mesh folder and all is said, all is good and you're done. At this point, you can close this crap down because you no longer need this. And what you're going to do is we're going to go to our P drive. So inside of your P drive, in your in your map stuff in your nav mesh folder you may or may not have a config if you do not have a config you need one and this is all it needs to say all you need is a cfg patches and this basically tells pbo manager or i'm sorry pbo project this tells pbo project that hey i need to create a pbo out of any file that's inside of this folder so that's what this does like i said i'll have this pasted below only thing you'll need to do is just change your like Arcadia. You switch it to your map name. So you just have to have this little thing in there and that's all you need. And then once you're done with that, you literally just open up PBO project again and you choose your primary source, which in my case would be Arcadia and you just hit crunch and you build a map and you know, you build your, you build your mods. The only difference this time is you will now have an at nav mesh PBO. So once you have your nav mesh PBO, um, you're pretty much good to go. Um, you'll see, we'll go to this one here. This is the one that I actually upload. You'll get your nav mesh. This is where you would put all of the buildings. 
uh, you would then pack your nav mesh, your world, your data. All of this would just go into like basically a server pack like this. And then you would upload it and you now have a working nav mesh. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly simple, hopefully I didn't confuse anybody. It's a very simple process. Uh, I will say full disclosure, your nav mesh generation can, it takes a while depending on how many buildings, how big the map is, how good your computer is. Um, you also may notice that whenever you build a nav mesh, you'll go into your map and zombies are either A, not coming into your interior doors or B, they're running through walls. Uh, C, only some buildings work. If that happens, you need to just generate another nav mesh. The nav mesh program is probably the jankiest thing I have ever seen in my life. And I've seen some jank. Uh, it's very janky. It's very outdated. It's very garbage. So it's, but it's what we got. So, I mean, there's been times when I've had to regenerate my nav mesh literally three times in a row for it to actually stick and, and work. It's, it's really, really janky. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's all you need. Now you might be saying, well, Hey, you know, we exported our map group POS. Where do we put it? Well, that is, a, you know, assuming that you have a set of mission files going on. Um, you, you may or may not have mission files yet for, you know, you may or may not have mission files yet set up for your map to be like an online map. Um, we can, I can do a video and go over that and on how to you actually like get, in fact, I plan on going over a video, basically setting up the economy editor, building your territories, um, and, and then like essentially building a mission file set from scratch. Uh, really, you're not doing it from scratch. You're taking it from Chinaris. You just take a, a vanilla Chinaris and you just start editing all of the files to match your needs. Um, that's the, at least that's the way I've done it. But um, I, I fully intend on doing a video on that. But um, like I said, I'm just trying to go in the process, you know, the order of operations here of, of kind of how you would how you would generate all of the files needed to put your stuff on a uh, on a full blown map. So that's pretty much it um like i said i will have everything required in you know in the description or maybe in a media fire link or, or something like that and if there's any questions you guys have please feel free to ask me as always uh feel free to join the discord you know i try and help out as much as i can in there um and and honestly you with the youtube comments sometimes i just don't see them or youtube just neglects to send me a notification it's it's really terrible but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all the support. Super, super thank you to all the new members we've been getting. Like you guys are freaking amazing. Freaking awesome, dude. I, I really do appreciate y'all. But that's it for this one, guys. Like I said, uh, if you guys have any like requested videos that you need to see or that you want to watch or you want me to learn how to do so I can teach you, please let me know. Let me know in the comments below. But that's it for me. I love all your faces. I'll catch you guys later. Love you, bye.